Vinny, you teach in both the business school and the political science department. One of the tensions, I guess, that uh, inevitably comes up in, in these discussions is whether economics is going to trump politics, whether the fact that the economic connections among these three countries are so strong that they're going to have to cooperate regardless versus the argument that says, no, 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 you know, these are still politically driven countries. Pak yun -hye just basically thinks Abe is a nationalist, and regardless of their economic ties, she doesn't want anything to do with them. Xi Jinping is going to have much the same agenda, despite the fact that Japanese corporations are creating something like 10,000 jobs in China. But the flip side is Xi Jinping is quietly saying, Mr. Abe, just don't go to Yasukuni. Come on over, we can cut a deal. So how do you, how do you come down on this interplay between the economics and security, particularly as it plays out among these three? I think it's important to remember that trade is always political, whether we're thinking about NAFTA, we're thinking about the WTO, all of these trade agreements have important political implications. If we look at the Chorus Agreement, Korea-US Free Trade Agreement, it had a very important political dynamic to it. It had to do with Korea also trying to enhance its security arrangements with the United States. So <clears throat> I think one cannot simply say that economics will trump politics. I think we've had this kind of naive view that Cordell Hall used to talk about, which I'm not totally against, but I'm not against it in the sense that I wish it were true, but I don't believe that free trades leads to peace on its own. I think it, quite uh, critically that I think it's uh, politics driving trade in many respects, particularly among these three countries. I think it's important to remember that Korea has a lot of free trade agreements. It doesn't have one with Japan. It doesn't have one with China which are two of its most important trading partners in the region. So you can talk about uh, there's you know, peace and harmony coming out of trade and, and finance and cooperation, but the reality is that's not happening. So I really do not think that trade agreements by themselves will lead to peace and harmony. I think there's serious territorial issues. There are serious issues that the Chinese worry about with respect to the Japanese. You're more of a Japan expert than I am by far, so you know those the domestic political dynamic in Japan with the nationalists is very important. You have a similar scenario in China, and you even have that in, in Korea these days. So I think it would be nice if we could believe that somehow trade and business people can paper over these things and we'll move to that kind of an agreement. I just don't think that's going to happen. If I may, just, just very briefly. Uh, you know, I just, I agree with uh, Professor Agwal uh, about, you know, the, the trade uh, only does not uh, lead uh, to uh, uh, political harmonization or, you know, uh, cooperation in the security area. But I just would like to give you one example. Uh, I agree with you. But, you know, the, prob the thing is, you know, how to manage the relationship. So it's difficult to explain, uh, you know, with simple words, that there's a lot of efforts involved. With China, we didn't have even that diplomatic relations 25 years ago. It was an enemy, no relations whatsoever. It was so difficult to get a visa to go to visit China at that time. It was in 1991 that we have established uh, diplomatic relations. It was 1992, I think, right? 92. Since then, a lot of things have happened, right? So I think it, it, it says a lot about the economic cooperation, uh, you know, pushing for, uh, you know, more harmony or more cooperation in the field of security and other political issues. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, China's position on the, on the Korean Peninsula have changed profoundly in favor of, in favor of South Korea. Uh, so, uh, I think this is one concrete example that uh, says otherwise.